Today I came into the studio thinking to myself, should I give up YouTube? Should I give up painting? We're all plagued with ideas about giving things up, aren't we? But the older I get, the more inclined I am to not give up. And when I look around me, despite the fact that YouTube is doing its best to destroy what we've built and to give everything that we've earned to other people, and I'll probably talk about that a bit more as I go forward with this video. I'm just having a look around in my studio at the moment to show you what, what, uh, what I have here, what's been built up. Um, yeah, despite YouTube doing its best to destroy everything that we've built up over the last three years, I'm not going to give up. You don't want me to give up, do you? Help us out by giving me a like, making a comment, watching our videos as much as you possibly can. Put them on in the background, let them play all day long. Just show YouTube that you appreciate what we do, me and Tamsin. Show them in the only way that they can possibly understand that what I do matters to you. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll survive the onslaught. And I know most people don't understand what I mean when I say I am, um, artificial intelligence is going to change the world, going to ruin the world. Um, I don't really know either. I don't know what that really means. But I do know that since the launch of um, the big programs, since everyone started talking about how AI was going to change everything, things have changed with YouTube. Things have changed. There are suddenly hundreds of thousands of tiny channels who are coming up and taking huge numbers of of views away from people like me and Emma Lefebvre and Ellen Crimi Trent and um, lots of us are suffering. And it matters because if our views go down, then YouTube will gradually stop showing us. And you won't be able to find me because I won't be there anymore. So that's what I wanted to say this morning to everybody. And I'll probably say it all again. Um, because it's it's very, very, very upsetting to see, and I'm going to say this, to see some painters who are painting badly and telling you how to paint, and they don't know the first thing about painting. There's a lot of disinformation out there, yet those people are the ones getting the huge number of views. Why is that? Because people click on their videos because they're clickbaity, because they... Um, say things like, um, this is boring, you shouldn't paint landscapes like this, and stuff like that, clickbaity stuff. I try not to do that. I try to be honest and straightforward. I try to teach you things that I know or show you things that I know are going to work for you because they're right, the right way to mix paint, the right way to apply paint, the right brushes to use, the right paper to use, the truth about paper and paint, that you don't need to have a particular kind of paper or a particular kind of brush to paint in any particular kind of way, that it's not like that. I've been painting since I was about three, which is now 67 years. I think I know something about art. I've painted hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of paintings. Some good, some bad, some indifferent, some large, some small, some oils, some watercolour, some acrylic, pastel. You name it, I've done it. I've done prints. I've done everything. I've learned anthroposophical art. I've learned from famous teachers like Ron Ranson. I've painted in a dozen different countries. I've trained as a teacher, I'm a professional teacher with a qualification, I've got a BSc in science. I know something. I've got something to share. I would like to think that YouTube appreciated what I share. And right now I'm sharing everything in my studio with you. You can watch this if you want, you can listen if you want, you don't have to listen or watch. I know this isn't painting, but I'm opening my heart right now to you and sharing the way I feel this morning, 
the way I feel this morning is please watch those of us who can help you become a better painter. Those of us who want to help you, we are here for you. We love you, we want to help you, and we want to share what we know with you. I'm con concentrating on my library here. I've got quite a lot of painting books, as you can see. I know pretty much what's in all of them. And what I'm gonna do now is pull out some of my favorites and recommend that you might want to have a look at those books. So I want to show you books by three authors who I think are really, really good and uh, so good. In fact, this particular lady, uh, Pat Weaver, I bought her book twice. <laughs> I had one here in France and one in England and uh, because I couldn't bear to be away from it because this is such a good book. This totally changed my approach to watercolour and if you like what I do nowadays, Really, um, I think she should be thanked for that because um, a lot of what she did, she's an American lady. Um, I think she still teaches. She's probably beginning to get towards her sell-by date, I expect. I'm not quite sure how old she is, but she's older than me. I almost did a, a tutorial, um, what do you call it, a, a workshop with her when I was living in the Bahamas. She came... Um, I arranged for her to come to the Bahamas to teach a workshop um, with a, a lady that um, was a friend of mine. Her name was Krista. I can't remember her last name, but she was called Krista. Um, and it was all arranged and she came and she did it, but I was ill at the time and um, in hospital. So I didn't get to take part in it, but she, um, Watercolour Simplified, it couldn't be a better title because she takes simple objects and she breaks the colours down into the simple elements and um, she shows you how to do that. It's a very good book. It's got all the information you need, all the basic fundamentals of what you need. And I mean need, not the thousands of different trivia that people tend to promote these days. And how to simplify something like a dog. Look at this, how beautiful that is. She's got this dog against a very complicated floral pattern from the chair that the dog's lying on, and yet somehow she makes it stand out and look beautiful. This is mastery. This is mastery of tone and colour. You wouldn't think to put this brown with this red, would you? And yet she's make it, made it look unbelievable. And her flowers, here's her um, study of flowers painted here. I think she, she's a genius, really. And you could do far worse than get this book. And I've gone through this book and painted my copies of her work. I've done a lot of that. I, I haven't done the portraits, I admit, because I'm not keen on portraiture. But I've tried out all of these techniques. Here we have something where she's comparing what happens when you use a warm palette versus a cool palette and how this looks hot, you know, this is California, and this looks cool, and you know, this is Norway. Um, you can get the mood of something just by changing the colors slightly. This is obviously um, Italy or somewhere like that, or Spain, and you can tell why. You know why intuitively, don't you? And she's got lots of things in here that you, you know, and, and clearly explained, simply explained, and influenced me an awful lot. So I totally recommend that book, Pat Weaver, Watercolour Simplified. You can have one of mine if you like. It's been exposed to the sun. This is the one that went to the Bahamas with me and you can see, <laughs> you see what happens when the sun gets a hold of colour. <laughs> the other one's okay, it's never been further afield than France. And then on a completely different type of painting, this one also, this is a painting this is a book by a painter who influenced me much earlier on in my painting career um, when I was, oh, I suppose this would have been in the 90s mostly, Magic of Watercolour. Um, James Fletcher Watson, he's no longer with us. He, I, I wish he'd been my granddad. <laughs> he's absolute genius. And this is another book which is well worth reading. It's got lots of information in it. It's interestingly written. 
At the beginning, he talks about some of the old masters who influenced him. Did you know that Cotman paints were named after someone called John Sell Cotman, who was an early watercolorist? I bet you didn't know that. Cotman paints, you know. Um, Turner and um, Gertin and all the others. We've all got something to, we owe something to all of these painters. But anyway, it doesn't go on about that very much. It talks about equipment, of course, materials and so on, and about mixing colours. Um, and he is a master of landscape. There is nothing boring about this landscape. This is beautiful, so simple. It's just a barn with a beautiful, hello, Oriel. If you come to see what uh, James Fletcher Watson is up to. Um, yeah, these paintings are masters. Thank you, Oriel is on my shoulder. <laughs> masters, absolute mastery of landscape. So simple, yet so beautiful. And I tried very hard to emulate some of these. I'm going to put you down now, Kat, come on. If you wouldn't mind, go back to your bed. Go on. I'll just go through some of these pages here and you can see for yourself. This is um, Scotland. This is uh, the Lake District. This is um, Venice. I still would love to be able to paint landscapes like this. I'd love to be able to show you how to paint landscapes like this. But even after 67 years of painting, I can't paint landscapes like this. I can get close, but I can't paint like he did. I would love to own one of his paintings. Maybe one day. Beautiful. Anyway, lots and lots and lots to learn from that book. Heartily recommend it. I'm going to take it to bed with me tonight and read it. And then on another note, Anne Blockley. Now, I can't mention Anne Blockley without mentioning her father, John Blockley. And I, he didn't really do much in the way of books, John. Um, I don't know why, but he didn't. But his work, I swear, is one of the most influential um bodies of work that has hit art. He painted in the 70s and the 80s, like people try to now. This kind of style has influenced thousands of leisure painters and professional painters in England and probably elsewhere in the world over the years and still continues to do so. If you look on YouTube, you will find people painting this kind of thing. The idea of the flattened foreground, that's, that was John Blockley who thought of that first. He took away some of the perspective problems by flattening the foreground and making it into just an interesting semi-abstract kind of um, area in the painting there. And um, just fabulous work. Fabulous. Again, a lot to learn from this and any other book that you can lay. Look at this. Look at this, Northumberland. I mean, how can anyone call that boring? It's brilliant. Brilliantly done and not as easy as it looks. He was a fantastic draftsman and a brilliant teacher. His daughter, Anne, carries on his legacy somewhat. She's got quite a few books out. I've got a couple of hers here. I've got three of hers, I think. The other one is um, Flower Painting, which is also really nice. I've used this book a lot. Um, totally recommend her too. Um, this book has got more traditional styled art in it. Look at this, blackberries. I should have a go at doing some blackberries. I had some for breakfast this morning. They're out now already. Um, she has inspired me. I have copied some of her work. You probably would recognize some of this, um, this art in some of the videos that I've done. I don't, um, 
I don't pretend not to have been highly influenced by that book. These two, not so much, because they are so much more, um, uh, well, much more abstract. This is much more heart-driven work. And um, this is a book that deserves to be read completely from beginning to end. She really opens her heart here and talks about her illness that has caused her to take a different look at what she did and start again, really, in many ways. This book and this one, projects going out into nature and uh, creating fantastic, uh, oh look, country walls. I did a sketch like that the other day, didn't I? Do you remember? I didn't realise that she'd done the same thing. I haven't read this one very well. I must sit down and do some reading and really read this one from front to back and the other one as well. Her flower painting book, I know that pretty much by heart. Um, so there we are. That's some suggestions for books that you might like to acquire. They're probably all available, like I said, secondhand on Abe Books, or you can definitely get them, especially the newer ones like this. But you can get a lot of these through Amazon. They do have secondhand connections. They go, uh, they work hand in hand with Abe Books, don't they? So those are just three of the authors that have influenced me over the years. And it's seeing these artists, who some of whom are still with us and some who aren't, on my bookshelf here, um, that makes me say, I'm not going to give up. Not that long ago, I had all my things for sale. I, you know, I was going to sell my plan chest and my paints and everything. I had an ad in the newspaper here in France and I was going to get rid of everything and stop completely. This was about 10 years ago. And then fate stepped in and um, my guardian angel stopped me from doing that. And so that's why I'm here talking to you on YouTube it was a long journey from that point 10 years ago, and I wish I'd started YouTube sooner. Um, but anyway, I am here now, and hopefully I will be for a few years yet, given your support. And I'll go back now to what I said at the very beginning of this diatribe. Please watch our videos, press the like button, subscribe to the channel, come back often, leave me comments, please. Put me on in the background, turn down the volume. You don't have to listen to me rambling on if you don't want to. Just play our videos, make YouTube aware that you care, because I know you do. If you don't know how to make YouTube aware that you care, just drop a comment in the comments below the video here, and I will come back to you with suggestions. And honestly, I'm depending on you. Help us out of this hole. Help us defeat the AI and all the Johnny-come-latelys out there who don't know what they're talking about. So I'll say goodbye now and uh, thank you for listening. And I love you all. And don't forget, watch our videos. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye bye.